Hey everyone, so this is actually the last section in chapter four, um, but I usually put it in with chapter five, the f chapter five unit. So um, today we're going to be talking about the antiderivative. So that's the opposite of the derivative. Okay, so the antiderivative. Now, be careful here because there's a difference in these definitions with big F and little f. So a function, big F, is called an antiderivative of the function little f if its derivative is little f, all right? So be careful, little f um, is actually a derivative, big F is your antiderivative. The general form of an antiderivative. If a function f is an antiderivative of a function little f defined on the interval i, then any other antiderivative of f has the form f of x plus c, where c is a constant. All right, so don't forget your plus c. That's really, really important. Okay, so using just our logic, if f is... If f of x is 0, what would big F of x be? What would be, whose derivative, I guess I didn't uh, freeze those so they wouldn't move. Whose derivative is 0? Any number, right? So it's just C, right? The derivative of a number, right? If I have f of x, little f of x. If I have little f of x equals 3, then its derivative is zero, right? The derivative of a function is of a number is zero. So the antiderivative of zero is just c, some constant. How about big G of x? Whose derivative is negative sine? Cosine. Now remember though, we have to put in a plus c because what if we had the function, right? If g of x was cosine x plus 3. If that's our function, our derivative is negative sine x. The 3 goes away. So we have to put in that plus c so that to make up for that, that constant that could be in the original problem. We're not sure if it is there, but if it's not, it's just a 0. Right? C is 0. Okay, a little harder. h of x is x to the 1 half. What's our rule for um, exponents, right? So if I have f of x is x squared, right, f prime, we just bring the exponent down, subtract it by 1, right? If it's x cubed, it's 3x squared. So this is the opposite. So what's the opposite of subtracting the exponent? We're going to add to the exponent, right? So instead of 1 half, instead of it bringing the 1 half down, subtracting by 1, we're going to add 1, so 3 over 2. And instead of multiplying, we're going to divide, right? The opposite of multiplying is divide. So, like, if you think about this one over here, the 3x squared, when I'm going backwards, um, I add 1, right? And then I end up dividing by that so that that 3 goes away. So we end up dividing by 3 over 2, which is 2 thirds x to the 3 over 2, and then plus c. All right, so that's our antiderivative. All right, so I want you to pause the video and try these on your own. So I'm going to start by rewriting this. This is e to the x plus 6x to the negative 2 minus sine x. Right. So big F of x. Whose derivative, whose derivative is e to the x? We'll just e to the x. So that's nice, right? Easy. Okay, so now instead of subtracting, we add. So we've got 6x, and then negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and then we divide by our exponent. Instead of multiply, we divide. And then whose derivative is negative sine? Cosine. So plus cosine x and then plus c. So then when I rewrite this, I'm going to get e to the x minus 6 over x plus cosine x plus c. All right. 
Okay, so that one's pretty tricky. All right, next one. G of X. So this one you can kind of just think logically about. Whose derivative is 3x squared? x cubed, right? So we add 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then divide by that exponent. So x cubed. Now, the next part is a little tricky. I'm going to put this on the side. 5x to the minus 1. What do we do? If, what do we get if we add, add 1 to it? That's 0. Can we divide by 0? No. So think about it this way. This is minus 5 x to the minus 1 is 1 over x. Whose derivative is 1 over x? Whose derivative is 1 over x? That's your ln. So this is minus 5 ln of x plus whose derivative is 12? 12 x, and then we have to throw in our plus c. All right. it's, it's tough going backwards, especially when you first start it. Okay, a differential equation is an equation where you find the anti Sorry, my brain stopped working. An equation involving the derivative. So sometimes in college, if you are going into engineering or any of the really the um, hard sciences where you have to take lots of uh, calculus, not just Calc 1, um, there's a class, the fourth Sometimes they call it Calc 4, and sometimes they call it differential equations. So when I was a sophomore in college, I took, we called it diffy Qs, right? Differential equation. Um, it's basically Calc 4, but there's a whole course on it. Um, so a differential equation in which you find an antiderivative is called a general solution. Uh, one where we actually figure out what C is is called a particular solution. And those words are used in these problems. So find the particular solution means we're going to figure out what our C is. Find the general solution, we're going to put a plus C in our answer. All right, so find the particular solution to the differential equation given the condition that when x equals 3, y equals 5. So we have dy dx equals 5x squared plus 2. So think about this. Whose derivative is, d is dy dx? Just y, right? The derivative of y is dy dx. What's the derivative of 5x squared? So we add 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. And divide by 3. Divide by your exponent. Plus whose derivative is 2. We're going to throw an x in there. And then we have our plus c. But now this one wants our particular solution. So we're going to use this information they gave us to solve for C. So they gave me that Y is 5. So 5 equals 5 over 3 times my X value is 3 cubed plus 2 times 3 plus C. So let's see, we get, that's 45. 9 times 5 is 45, plus 6, plus C. So this is 51. So C is negative 46. So my final answer, Y equals 5 thirds X cubed plus 2X minus 46. And that's the final answer. And if you ever want to check your work, you could always... Um, take the derivative, see what you get. All right, same idea, pause, try it on your own. So the derivative of dy dx is y. The derivative of x squared, add 1, divide by the exponent. Add 1, one there's a 1 there, 1 plus 1 is 2, divide by my exponent. And then 1x plus C. I'm going to simplify that. One third X cubed plus X squared plus X plus C. Now I'm going to take my X and my Y and plug in so I can solve for my C. Negative one equals one third times three to the third plus nine plus three plus C. 
So let's see, that's 9 plus 9 plus 3, 18, 21 plus C is negative 1. So I got C is negative 22. So my final answer is Y equals 1 third X cubed plus X squared plus X minus 22. Done. All right. If the velocity of a particle moves along the x-axis is given by v of t, find the position of the particle at any time. So remember, the derivative of position is velocity. So now we're going backwards. And they're giving me my initial position is at 1. My initial position is 1. Right? So if v of t is 4t squared minus 3t plus 7. Let's find x of t. Derivative of 4t squared is 4t cubed and then divide by 3 minus t becomes t squared. Have to divide by that 2 plus 7t and then plus c. Okay, so the initial position is 1. What's initial mean? Initial means time equals zero. So we're going to plug in the point zero comma one. And this one's pretty nice, right? When they give us initial position like that, that means I plug in zero everywhere. So one equals zero minus zero plus zero plus C. So my C is just one. So that's nice. Um, be careful because a lot of times our initial x value is 0, um, but watch out for like the e's because it doesn't end up being 0 then. So 4 thirds t cubed minus 3 over 2 t squared plus 7 t plus 1. And that is our answer. All right, last one. A little tricky because this one is giving us the second derivative. So this is like our concavity, right? So we have d2y, the second derivative of y is 12x squared. So what would the first derivative be? Whose derivative is that? So we add 1, divide. And then don't forget your plus c. I'm going to simplify that. So that's 4x cubed plus c. The condition when x equals 0, so we don't have y yet, so we have to do the derivative again. So now if this is our first derivative, what would y equal? So we have 4x to the third. That's just x to the fourth, right? That becomes 4x to the fourth all over 4 plus cx. Remember, c is just a plain number. Plus, and then you have an option. Um, some teachers like to do C1 and C2. That's what I usually do. You can, if you don't like C1 and C2, you can make it C and K or something. Um, so I'm going to do C1 and C2. All right, so now I'm going to plug in to find my C1 and C2. So I have X0 and 1. So Y is 1 equals 0 plus 0 plus C2. So C2 is 1. So now we have x squared plus c1x plus 1. Now I'm going to plug in my 8 and my 3. 8 equals c9 plus 3c1 plus 1. So c1 looks like is, let's see, that's 10, negative 2 over 3. I subtracted the 9 and the 1. That gives me a negative 2 divided by 3. So my final answer is x to the 4th minus 2 thirds x plus 1. Um, so I would say take a picture. I don't, don't do the homework. We're going to do it in class. So remember, if you watch a video at home, we're going to be working on 
um, the homework together. So either bring your textbook. I'm going to give you more than this also. Either bring your textbook or take a picture of page 370, um, those problems approximately. Because honestly, this is just like drill and kill. We need to just really practice antiderivative so we get used to it. All right, that's it. Have a great day.